Have you ever heard the term frock it? Today we're at Trinity Graphics and we're gonna learn how that word can add value to your business. Frock it is just two words combined front pocket. It's what we're here to showcase today. You're having a multi-step process going from printing the fabric to then cutting out said fabric to then sewing said fabric. We really wanted to elevate this basic tee and not only doing a custom pocket here in the left chest, but we also did a branded imprinted tag. Whenever you're spending more time on a product, the value is going to be increased. Hi, I'm Marshall Atkinson, and welcome to another episode of Jersey's Adventures in Apparel Decorating in beautiful St. Petersburg, the birthplace of commercial aviation and Trinity Graphics. So let's get to it. We got started 21 years ago in 2000. When I started, we were home-based, running out of the, my parents' garage for almost 13 years. You know, one of my big goals and aspirations was to have a, a brick-and-mortar business. After years of saving and saving and saving, finally positioned ourselves to move into a brick-and-mortar, and I had the philosophy, if you build it, they will come. So not only our team, but the customers and clients as well. We are known for just having a lot of passion for what we do. We stand behind our product no matter what. We strive for perfection here. So how does creativity play into that with helping your customers out? Tremendously. Um, you know, it allows us to take the customer's ideas and try to bring them to life, utilizing our in-house creative talents. Let's talk about the frocket idea that we're doing. What does that mean? Frocket, I know, right? <laughs> um, I'm sure some frat guy came up with it and, you know, all of a sudden it, it ends up in Urban Dictionary. Frocket is just uh, two words combined, front pocket. So we collaborated internally and with our client to come up with a design for a custom pocket. We took some inspiration from one of their beer cans for the brewery that we're working with and integrated that into the design. And you're also printing a small hem tag, right? Yeah, so what we did was we really wanted to elevate this basic tee and not only doing a custom pocket here in the left chest, but we also did a branded imprinted tag on the lower portion of the, of the shirt. Typically breweries are, are selling shirts in their tasting rooms for around $20. With this tee, you can sell it between 30 and 35 all day long. So Scooter, where are we going next? Uh, we're gonna head to the production floor where the magic happens. So let's get to it. I'm with Zach Howard, the graphic designer here at Trinity. So Zach, let's talk about the artwork. How was it developed and what's the inspiration? It came from their label on a specific beer that they had and we were just inspired by how it looked and the colors and we thought, given the project in mind, that that would be a really good texture for how the pocket would look uh, at the end of the day building art files for production. How do you go about this for this particular process? Once we figured out where we wanted the texture to lie on the pocket, we used the art to kind of lay out and our separation and kind of got the spot colors chosen, particularly PMS ones, kind of created the seps and uh, you know had it ready for, for separation from there. So. And we're not just doing one pocket on a shirt, right? We're putting multiple up so you can print multiple pockets on the front. Walk us through that process and how that works. Yeah, once we had our dimensions and worked with our embroidery department to figure out exactly how much extra art that we needed over our bleed, we kind of figured out how many we could fit our max size on the, on, the, on, the, on the press and did the same for both the pocket and the logo drop as well for burning. So somebody that's doing this that may never have done this before, what do you recommend they do? I recommend they figure out their final size of the pocket. That was something that we worked on. To, we had a few different templates to, to look from and figured out the real like proper size that really worked with us. I know we considered having the each pocket maybe be different, but we figured out that that was, it was more straightforward to have them all be in the same exact place. We had some templates cut out from paper that we were referencing and we had some smaller pockets, some larger pockets. That was what I used as my size guide when I was actually making the template uh, in Illustrator. 
Also, when we had this set up, it was one of those things working with the print team, you know, how, you know, is this realistic? Is, could we go bigger? You know, really testing those boundaries because we want to be able to print the material, you know, as big as we can so that way we can maximize our, our efforts. We really like the, the heathered garments here at Trinity and it's something that is different that we like to offer our clients that is, you know, looks different, it also feels different and it definitely can increase the value in their product at the end of the day. So we ended up looking at the, the heathered garments and went from there. We're out on the production floor with Tristan Jennings, who's the uh, screen printer here. So Tristan, let's talk about the job we're running. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, what we're going to be running is a pocket design, which is going to have six pockets up. It's going to be a custom apparel that will be cut and sewn. And we're going to run the pockets front and back on white shirts. It's going to be a four color. And we're printing two locations, right? So you got the pocket print and then the, also the tag. Right, the emblem that is down at the bottom. It's like a hem tag. It's water-based ink, so you have to run at a certain speed so that the inks don't dry on the screen. It's one of those not very used methods of printing. What's the value of using water-based ink? The hand, you don't have any real feel compared to like a plastizol design, which is you kind of feel it's a little rough depending on the shirt material that's used. But water-based I'd say is preferable if you're going for a custom garment or something of a higher quality design. When creating a pocket print, using a template can be a huge time saver in the production process. This is a four color. We're printing six pockets up, and we're going to print this on the front and the back of the shirt, which will allow us to maximize the area. Hothead here is actually heat pressing lightly the shirt fibers down to make them flatter, and it allows the ink to penetrate the shirt better. And it's uh, actually pressing against a Teflon sheet that is stretched into the frame. Using the hothead with the softer shirt, you're creating less fibers sticking up, which then allows the ink to penetrate better into the t-shirt, allowing that soft feel to be pushed forward. I think the trickiest part is making sure that your ink reservoirs stay good while keeping everything moving in motion. Water-based, you wanna keep it moving constantly. It can congeal in the screen. The palettes being hot could dry it quicker. One thing that's great about this design is that it's not a design that requires an underbase of any type, so you can just print the colors back to back. With these shirts too, with the water-based ink, we're gonna run it through the dryer twice in order to get them the best cure. That way there's no washout or anything. Right now we're about to print some hem tags. There's 24 up. It's one color water-based. We're adding value to the garment. We just finished printing, and now we're in the embroidery department with Krista Barnes, who is the embroidery tech. So Krista, walk us through what we're gonna be doing in here. Next, we're going to be cutting out the pocket squares. We're gonna be pressing them with the iron and then doing a pre-sew before we could press it with again and then attach it to the shirt itself. After I cut it all out, I have to press it on the top and get it ready for the two stitches that are gonna be on the top and then press it again so that I can attach it to the actual shirt. What's the workflow for making these pockets? Um, I just do one step all the way through to completion. So I'll cut out all the pockets, I'll press them all, I'll sew them all, then press them again and then sew right. them again. And that makes it easier. Yes, so you get much faster, you get in the groove. We decided the size of the pocket that we wanted it to ultimately be, so I cut out a little template so that I can make ironing a lot faster and easier. When I do all my pockets, it takes seconds. You just want to do them all at once. And usually I don't even cut the thread. I just continue to the next pocket and then cut them all up when I'm finished. And you don't need to worry about back tacking or anything because when you fold it over and attach it to the shirt, the stitch will catch it. I'm using a wider stitch than normal for the top so that it is a little bit more predominant and you can see it a little bit better on the shirt. When I'm done, I have my pocket bunting and then I'll go through and stitch it again. For this stitch, I'm gonna use the edge of my stitch. I'm gonna just line it with my presser foot and just zip on down and do the same thing. Back in and I'm pressing 
You could press this all at once and stitch it first, but I found I had a lot more issues and it was easier to press. And the time that I would have saved from pressing twice just wasn't worth it. <laughs> so now I'm gonna lay out my shirts and I'm gonna attach my pockets. And I take the cross section between the seam right here and then the armpit. Lining it up with the seam of the neck right here, right, right at the intersection at the bottom here with the armpit. Just try to like line the bottom of the pocket up so you're still gonna have a little bit. Starting at the bottom stitch that I have. And what I'm gonna do is come in and make a little triangle to secure the pocket. When I'm getting into the flow of sewing my pockets, I can usually get them down to less than a minute of pocket and just zip on through. I'll use three from the side and two from the bottom and that'll be my placement for the bottom tag. And I'm sewing up a bit for these ones because the intention is that we want it to get frayed as you wash it so you don't have to worry too much about your edges here because those are going to get all frayed. I just attached the hem tag to the garment and we left it raw on the edges so that when you wash it a few times it'll look nice and frayed so that it'll add a unique touch to the garment. So it's been a fantastic day at Trinity. So Scooter, your team's been awesome. I really love the way this shirt came out. The pocket print looks great with the water-based ink and the hem tag looks awesome as well. And what I really love is the fact that this design completely matches your brewery, your customer's beer can. Look at that, that's incredible. I think your crew did a really great job elevating this shirt to match the brand. The, the Turbid 7 beer is, is one of their core beers there. Uh, they don't have anything that represents apparel-wise this particular beer. It's a limited run of 50 pieces, so it, they'll, they'll be out quick. We didn't want it to, to, to scream, hey, this is, this is, you know, a green bench. Hey, this is, you know, the brand. But we went with a unique approach, taking the beer label can, uh, putting it on, on the frocket. We couldn't have a shirt without uh, a branded label, so that's why we did, uh, you know, the unique uh, label down there on the bottom. How do you think of how the garment fits into this whole project? It's a perfect premium blended shirt, has a super soft hand, which represents, you know, the super soft hand of the water-based inks that we use to print on, on the pocket. Everything here is elevated, which will demand a higher a per unit cost. It will demand a, a higher profit margin uh, for, for the brewery. So Scooter, what do you think your customers are gonna think about this? Oh, they're gonna be ecstatic. Uh, you know, they have a little insight to, to what we were doing here, but to, get, to be able to see and feel and touch the finished product, uh, get it out in the tasting room and uh, start making some money. So they'll be excited about that. So if you didn't know what frock it meant, you do now. Your crew was fantastic today, Scooter. Thank you so much, yes. appreciate you. Thanks for coming out. So that wraps up this episode of the Adventures in Apparel Decorating. Don't forget to subscribe to the Jersey's YouTube channel for the next episode.